I'm going to go ahead and pray for Brother Candido this morning. Um, thank you, Lord. I pray that your anointing will be on Brother Candido. And I pray that as he teaches your word, that you will open up each and every one of our hearts, our, um, our understanding, and we can receive word from you. Jesus, amen. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. So last night I was studying, and I was picking my voice, and I was uh, verses that I was praying for God's will. And I'm going to go with the topic, born again. So this is my topic, born again. And this is uh, really important to be born again. So. So, uh, in the book of John, Joel? I'm sorry, this is supposed to be Joel. I think you read this. It's Joel. Joel. I didn't know it was Joel. The book of Joel. You're drinking up, Joel. This is the abbreviation for Joel. It looks like Joel, but it's the abbreviation for the book Joel. Yeah, it's the abbreviation. Has everybody read this already? Okay. You should come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So uh, in, in Joel, this was written, uh, this is not made up. This is God speaking directly to him, and, and he puts down what he heard. And it says in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, it says, And it shall come to pass afterward, which means it, it will happen and after this. It will happen. Afterward means from this point on, basically. From this point on, this will happen. And the verse goes and says that I will, and, and this I is referring to who? It's referring to God. Jesus hasn't been born yet. This is before Jesus' time. So this is actually referring to God. It says that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It means everybody. So it, it says, this is not just for the Jews. This is for everybody. It says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This is not just specifically for the Jews. It is for all people. Gen Jews and Gentiles, Greeks, all alike. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and uh, verse 29 it says and also upon the servants and upon thy handmaids so and in those days will I pour out my spirit. So if you remember, this was prophesied and it, it hadn't happened yet. And this was like years later. I'm not sure, 400, I think I believe it was about 400 years later. This prophecy, it was spoken 400 years ago and, and they held on to that prophecy. And then all of a sudden, I'm gonna ask you guys, I'm gonna test you guys. I, I'm pretty sure some of you already know. We'll see if you know as well. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Uh, which one of these, I, I'll tell you the answer, but just, just if you were to ask which one of these did it happen? Did it happen with Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or in the book of Acts? Which? Well, you might be right. Let, let's see. I'm going to test all of you and see if you know. And so uh, just hold on to that, and then we'll talk about that again. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 says, When Jesus came into, into the coast of Caesarea, this is an area, 
Caesarea Philippi, which is the name of the city in that area. He asked his disciples, saying, so, and then, you remember who were his disciples? You remember who his disciples were? And it, this he is referring to Jesus. So, so he asked his disciples, so Jesus asked each of his 12 disciples a question. And do you remember who the disciples were? Remember the 12 men that Jesus picked his disciples? Uh, but he asked him, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? <coughs> so he's asking each of those 12 disciples, Who do, who do men say that I am? Who, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they had an answer for him. And Matthew 16, verse 14 says, And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. And some say Elias. And others, so you remember, he was a prophet at the time, right? Thank you for, for reminding me. Some say Elias, which was a, uh, a Greek. Is this a Hebrew? And others say Jeremiah, which I believe is a, a Jew. Is this weeping Jeremiah? Jeremiah? Yeah, Jeremiah. Yeah. Jeremiah. yeah. The weeping prophet. or one of the prophets. So he's, they're telling them what some say that who, who, you, who you are. They believe that you are one of these. And Jesus knew he was, he was testing them. He was asking them these questions. And verse 15 goes on to say, He saith unto them, this them is referring to who again? It's it's the disciples, because remember Jesus was speaking to the disciples. And he he focused on them and he said, But whom do whom say ye that I am? So he asked the disciples specifically, Who do you think I am? And you notice the emphasis, he uses the word I am here. And verse 16 goes on to say, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. And do you know what Christ means? Yeah. The word Christ. He said, again, Simon said, He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So he knew that he was the anointed one. Christ means the anointed one. That is what Christ means. And he, he said, right here, he said, Thou, he said, Thou art the Christ, which is the anointed one. There's none other. There's not, somebody else is anointed. There's not two gods. There's not God and then Christ. No, they're, they're the same. He said, The son of the living God. Again, he said, the son of the living God. So Peter understood who Jesus was. And the next verse, in verse 17, goes on to say, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Now, what's this him referring to again? This is referring to Peter. He said unto him, Blessed art thou. And, and, and he said, he, he, Blessed are you because of your understanding. You understood who I am. And he's, he blessed him. He said, I will give to you and the, the keys. But remember, he answered. He understood who Jesus was. And so Jesus gave him the keys. And But uh, the verse goes on to say, uh, Blessed art thou, 
Simon Bar Barcona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. So meaning, human people have not told you who I am. But my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed this unto him. So no, no other people have shown this to you, but it was, this, it was God that showed it to him. And it's the Heavenly Father that showed, revealed it to him. So how do you explain that part to you? Okay. If you go back up to this, are you talking about this verse here? So Jesus asked him specifically, whom do you say that I am? And there's no conflict here. He's asking him, who do you say that I am? And when Peter answered, he explained it, who he said. Oops, wrong way. Peter answered and said, thou art Christ, the anointed one. Is God in, is in, so he, again? He said, "Flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you." So, but if you explain, my Father, the Holy Ghost, which should make this clear, so people understand it, the this more clear. Jesus said, "My Father, which is the Spirit, and He's in heaven, has shown this unto you." And this is not from flesh and blood, but this is from the Spirit of God that has shown this to you. Is that, is that what this means? Yes. From my understanding, the Father himself, the Father is like, is, is a spirit, right? God's a spirit. And so, so God's, the Father's a spirit, and no man can see God except through Jesus Christ. So God became flesh. But, but Jesus is still God. He just became flesh, right? That is correct. Yes. So Jesus Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. And verse 18 says, And I say un also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, and notice Jesus Jesus is saying this. He's adding some emphasis here. He says, I will build my church. And this is he, he said, I will. He's talking about the future. He said, I he was here on earth, but he said, the church hasn't been established at this point yet. But he said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell <coughs> shall not prevail against it. So not, the world cannot conquer the church. Once that church has been established, they cannot pull this church down. And God said, or Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And that is powerful. And this is God's will and he put it, it said he will build this church and nothing will prevail against it. And there's only one church, right? There's only one church. He said, I will build my church. There's no S at the end of churches, or at the end of church. There's, it does not say churches, it just says church. There's only one. And a lot of people in the world, they get confused about this. Because, uh, you know, you see there's different religions all in the world. But if you look in the Bible, it's very clear. And there's proof. There's only one church. And verse 19 says, and I will give un and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever and whatsoever thou shalt find on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
And Jesus is again, Jesus is saying this. So he's saying, whatever you bind on earth, we bound on earth. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Thank you for letting me know that. Okay. Uh, again, this first here says, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth, meaning set free. Like uh, you've been bound in sin, but then you were loosed from your sin. Whatsoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So when heaven opens up, that that comes down onto earth. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So Jesus is talking to Peter here, and he's telling him. He said, "Whatsoever." He's talking to Peter again. He said, "Whatsoever you bind on earth." It shall be bound in heaven. And then he also says, Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So, for example, Peter was, uh, he was speaking these words, and uh, when, when, when they said you must be born again, you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. If you don't, then you can't get to heaven, right? So when he spoke here on earth, So if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, you can't get to heaven. You're ba you're barred from getting there. So he said, "What if you whatsoever is loosed on earth, it'll be loosed in heaven as well." So Peter was given the power. He was given the keys to the kingdom of heaven right here. So he got the keys, and he can open or loose whatever what we need. And the power is in your speech. So that was a good explanation. That was really good. Um, so whatever you lose here will be used there. So let, let me uh, expand on this again a little bit. Remember, he has the keys to the kingdom. Remember, he says, and I will give unto thee. And this is, this is, thee is referring to Peter. He said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So he's adding this for emphasis. Peter held on to this. But remember, the church wasn't established at this point. It was Matthew, Mark. The church wasn't established in Luke. The church was finally established in the book of Acts. At that point on, that was when the church was established. So, so there's keys. It says keys. So there's more than one key to get in, or, or more than one key. Hmm, that's a good thing to study. Why it says keys? Oh, well, because there's many so First, you have to repent. Then you have to be baptized in Jesus' name, and then you have to receive the Holy Ghost. So those three things are required to get into the heaven. So those are like the three keys, kind of like. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That was very good. Thank you. And then uh, I know you've done this first. Uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it again. Um, when Jesus died and rose again, he was on earth about 40 days, right? And he was walking around teaching about 40 days after he arose from the dead. And uh, Matthew 28 18 says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So he had all the authority. The authority, the power, he had the authority to do everything. So like if you were to go into court and, uh, you know, the, the cops, maybe they caught you doing something and you went to court. Um, he doesn't have all the authority, but the court... The, the court has all the authority. The judge does, right? The judge has all the authority. And there's only one judge that's sitting in that courtroom, right? Uh, so Jesus said, 
in verse 19, he says, Go ye, and he's talking again to the disciples. Talking, well, there's 11, because one Judas went and hung himself. But he said, he was explaining to them, he said, uh, Later, they did bring in the 12th disciple, Matthias, again. But he said, Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And but Peter, he heard this, but remember, the church hadn't been established at this point yet. It wasn't until later. But Jesus, yeah, um, but Jesus was here, and he was talking to the disciples at this point. And he was telling them. So if people focus on this verse, they tend to focus on this verse, but you got to realize the church wasn't established at this point. And he's telling them, Jesus said, Go ye therefore. He's telling each of them to go. And then after that was when Jesus was ascended. I have more. I want to expand on this a little bit more to add to it. But if you look at this word, this word that says name, is this is not a plural. This is this is singular. It, it, it always says N A M E. Is that is that plural or singular? You're not sure. Okay. Well, hold on. Let, let's let's think about this. It says name N A M E. Okay. Do you know what singular means? One, right? There's only one. So, for example, uh, the word. If it was plural, that means there's more than one. But look at the word, it says name. So if you were to add an S to that word name and said names, then that would be plural. But if you notice, it says baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. But if you think about it, what's the name of the Father? There's a son, what's the son's name? Okay, just think about the son, what's the son's name? Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, if you look at him, what's the name of the son? It's Jesus, right? That's right. The son's name is Jesus. Okay, but what's the name of the Holy Ghost? What's the name of the Holy Ghost? Holy? No. Is it God? No, it's still Jesus. The name is Jesus. What's the name of the Father? All right, it's Jesus. They're all in one, right? So, the Jesus, if you were, you know, when Mary, when she was, the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary, and she became pregnant, and that was Jesus manifested in the flesh. But, the Father, in John 1, verse 14 says, the Father became flesh. There's 114, I believe it is. I need to add this to my PowerPoint presentation. But he became flesh, and it's one. A lot of people in the world overlook the fact that there's this word name here is singular. So they always they think seem to think that there's three gods, and they got this stuck in ingrained in their head. And I know before I believed in Trinitarian before as well. But then when I started thinking about it, uh, I knew who the one was, Jesus, the Son, but I was still confused about the Father and the Holy Ghost. Now, I, I grew up Catholic, and uh, it wasn't until later that I, I was taught one God, and then I realized that this is only one name that is being mentioned. And then, it just, I have this line here for emphasis. And uh, Mark 16, verse 15 says, And he said unto them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And again, he said to preach the gospel, which is the good news. The gospel is the good news. And that's that's what the gospel is. And he said, to every creature. That means to every individual, every person in this world. And the verse 16, 16 goes on to say, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But, is it, and notice that TH at the end of believeth, that means you got to continue to believe. He said, He that believeth 
and is baptized shall be saved. But you need to have both. You need to believe and be baptized as well. You've got to have both. You can't just have the one, believe only, and think you're done. <clears throat> and, and just give up, forget about baptism. You must have both. You have to believe and be baptized. And the verse goes on to say, but he, and this is just, this he just means anybody, just in general, any person that believeth not shall be damned. So uh, if somebody decides they don't want to believe in it, and they don't want to believe in being born again, they can't get to heaven. They won't even be able to see heaven. So you will be judged one day. Is this clear? And in Luke chapter 24, verse 47, says, And that repentance... And remission, which is a forgiveness of your sins. It's, it's your forg forgiveness of sins. It means all the sins that can be forgiven. Not just half. You, you're not going to hold on to some of your sins and keep them. <clears throat> it's not even 99%. If you, have, if you get rid of 99%, can you get to heaven? If you, do you think you're safe if you get rid of only 99% of your sins? No. No. Oh, 99 rounds up to 100. <laughs> no, no rounds up with God. <laughs> if, if you only, if you say one and you don't give up for this one, you think this is an insignificant thing and you just hold on to it, you still aren't going to make it. You have to completely repent of your sins. And the verse goes on, it says, uh, remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. <coughs> it means everywhere, the whole world. But it's beginning at Jerusalem. So it begins at Jerusalem and branches from there across this world. But notice this part right here. It says, in his name, which is one name. And this is Jesus speaking, right? Yes, Jesus is speaking at this point. So he said, he didn't say, not in his name. Jesus said, in, uh, he, Jesus, Jesus said, in his name, though. But he, remember, he'd already identified who Jesus was. <clears throat> and he, when he ascended, he was still Jesus. He was still God. <clears throat> and when, as he ascended, I was verified that who Jesus was. He, he was God. Yeah. And there was none other. It was just his name. That was awesome. Beautiful teaching. Um, so suppose if one of us were to ask you... Um, Jesus was speaking this, and he was, was he speaking about his name, God, what was, so, I agree with what you said, um, Jesus was manifested in flesh, but he said the words, in his name, but what is his name, was in God's name, but if God's a spirit, he's a father, is his name the same as Jesus? Yeah, a lot of people in the world don't understand it, um, Jesus, he was speaking, and he said, in his name. And so some people think there's two separate entities here. Um, but, but even still, they're kind of neglecting the third, which is the Holy Ghost. But, uh, but you believe in Trinitarian, then some of them think there's only two, and they ignore the third. Uh, if you want to explain this a little bit more. Am I lost? No, we don't okay, but God. They're actually out of gas things through. He's just hypothetical. Okay, uh, we're back to the other verse of the And the last one's got a seal of approval. It's 28, 28, 19. I'm sorry, Matt. Go back to Mark 28, 18. So Jesus is speaking here, right? 
when he says baptizing him your, your teacher was good but he said baptize him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost so you asked and we already confirmed that the Son's name was Jesus right so what is the name of the Father there's uh, Matthew He's talking about the same here. It said in his name, when you say that in his name, he's, he's understanding that the God showed Peter the truth. He showed it to Peter. And he's teaching and he's emphasizing that he's, take your eyes off of me, the flesh, but put your eyes off on God. And he's saying there's only one God, and his name is Jesus. You know, it's only one. So emphasizing the teach. Is that right? I can't because I'm conflicted. So if you notice the whole time that during Jesus' uh, time that he was walking on earth, he never said me, me. He always said Jesus or he's talking about me or uh, most of the time that Jesus was here on earth, he was always pointing people towards God. Because he didn't want people looking at him specifically. It was like the process of, of Jesus' work while he was here on earth to point people towards God. So that was a good explanation. Um, it's not about, it wasn't about me. It's, Calvary was first. Uh, I'm jumping ahead of the cart here a little bit. Thank you for adding that. Remember, there's one name, his name. In John uh, 3, verse 3, I know there's other... The verses before this was when the Pharisees were... Uh, they met with... Oh, the one Pharisee met with Jesus in the night, Nicodemus. And uh, he, he met him during the evening because he was afraid, you know, intimidated. Um, I wish I had time to add more verses so that I could show what was going on before this happened. <clears throat> I need to add another PowerPoint, I think, but I'll do that. <clears throat> Anyways, it says, uh, again, he was talking to Jesus, and, and this verse 3, 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, which is more emphasis here, because he's wanting him to, you know, pay attention. Uh, I wish I would put the verses above it, but it was, uh, the Pharisee asked him, he said, good Master, he said, I know that you are a great teacher, and he's asked him, how are these things, how can these things be, and he is, because he is a, he was a scholar himself, and he, he was trying to figure out who Jesus was, and he, he, you know, how we, we know that you are, God is with you, we know that, that you are anointed, so you are a great teacher and he knew that and it was, it was odd how he wanted him to teach him which I thought was very interesting and uh, Jesus said verily verily I say unto thee and this is Nicodemus Nicodemus This was the name of the nigga who was a Pharisee at the time. Uh, Jesus was talking with him. He said, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. And I remember this is Nicodemus that he was talking with, him, with Jesus. Oh, there's an illustration that I saw that one to use too. He said, except a man be born again, If you're not born again, you won't, you can't see the kingdom of God. You, you, you can't get in. So you, you're banned. Yeah. So he said, if without being born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So you have to be born again to be able to see the kingdom of God. 
to even see it, you have to be born again. And then the, the next verse says, Nicodemus saith unto him, and I'm sure he was kind of puzzled with this, what Jesus said. He's like, how can I be born again? You know, and it, without the Holy Ghost, you, you're kind of puzzled. You don't know what he's talking about. And so maybe some of them felt you feel the same way, but, uh, but Peter's teaching, they didn't have any experience with the Holy Ghost at that time. Mm -hmm. They hadn't heard the preaching by Peter yet at that time. They knew nothing of the Spirit. But Peter understood he had faith. And he continued on. And there's more verses. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again Oh, I'm sorry. When he is old, yeah. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Mm -hmm. So can you come back into your mother's womb and be born again? Nicodemus <laughs> is like, how in the world could this happen? How, how could you do this? So again, Jesus taught him again, and he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, which is a different birth. You have to be born of the water, which represents baptism, and of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And in John chapter 3 verse 6 says, that, that which is born of the flesh, is flesh. So when you're born naturally, you, you're flesh. And also, that which is born of the spirit, which, uh, when you're born here, you're into the, you're, you're born into sin. And you have to be born again and to reconnect with God and your spirit is born again when you get a Holy Ghost. But you have to be born again. You have to transfer into God's family. When you're born of the flesh, you're born into the family and generations family and of sin, Adam yeah. and Eve. But when you're born of the spirit, you're born of the spirit of God. Right. And when you're born again, you understand that it's the spirit of God that is in you. And it says... It, it's, it, you have to be born again. You right. have to. You have to be born in the Spirit. That's you have to transfer right. into the, the new, new family, new family of, God. of God because, and, and the world just doesn't understand it. You have to be born again. You have to have that spiritual birth. And again, he's telling them that this is going to happen. It will happen. And he said in here, in this verse, he said, Marvel not. It will happen. In the verse verse 3 or 7 says marvel not that I say unto thee you must be born again you have to be born again you have to transfer into the family of God so Jesus never beats around a bush he is, he is very direct in his teaching and with you, without that your soul will be lost and he made emphasis, he said again, you must be born again. You must be baptized in Jesus' name. You must receive the gift of the Holy Ghost so that you can reconnect with the Spirit of God. The Bible says that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So it's not just the flesh that worship, but the spirit that connects with God's spirit. So God is a spirit. Amen. So some people get confused and they, they fell, but they're doing it on your own, you can fail, but God never fails. And when you get that spirit inside you, you will resist that world. And and you'll still be have temptations, but you have the power to resist it. And the, the, the devil will fail. 
But you, the thing is that you must be born again. Adam is the flesh of the God is mm. with you. Yes, that is exactly. Adam and Eve, their family, the generations of sin, you have to transfer out of that into the family of God so that you can reconnect with God. That was great. I'm going to put that down. So that's good. Do you, anybody have any questions? And verse, chapter 7, verse 38 says, um, and again, he's, uh, this is John. This is John who's writing this. And he said, um, I think it was 85. So John was, John saw Jesus in sin, and they were, all these people saw. And then later, he wrote this down. John wrote this, this about eight. 85 AD or something like that. This is years later. He's, he wrote this. He said, he, verse 38 says, and what's this he referring to? Anyone in the world. Yeah. This, this he refers to anyone in general. He said, he, which is anyone, that believeth on me. As the scripture saith, out of his belly, yeah, out of his belly, shall flow, he says it shall flow rivers of living water. So when you get the Holy Ghost, and you, you speak in tongues, it's like rivers of living water flowing out of you. And it says, ye shall receive it. And uh, verse 39 says, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Remember, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So, first he had to die, and then he rose again, and walked on earth, and taught, and then he was ascended. When he ascended, that was when he became glorified. And that's Jesus, and that's when the Holy Ghost was poured out, after this point. But a lot of people tend to misunderstand this. Uh, they overlooked the book of Acts, and you've got to be really careful not to overlook the book of Acts. Um, they focus on the apostles' teachings and some of that, but they tend to overlook the book of Acts. But Jesus was telling them that this will happen. So the italicized, what does that mean? That, that just means that these words were added for uh, English clarification. But, um, but I think this part was just was, it was because for emphasis. Palestine's to make it more uh, English understand it is it because Jesus was not yet glorified so if they, they focus on just the teaching and they don't look, focus on the book of Acts uh, we'll look for in Acts chapter 1 verse 1 this is, this is I'm going kind of lengthy I know Do, does anybody need a break a coffee break or anything I'm just trying to go through this. I know I, I, I have a lot more to go on, but it will be done in, at our conference, which is more time. Uh, let's see. Let me go back here. Uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 1 says, The former treaties. The former treaties. Have I made O Theophilus? Yeah. This writings, treaties is referred to writings. The former treaties have I made O Theophilus. Mm -hmm. That's a man's name. 
the higher up official, uh, he was a Oh, Luke, okay. This was a, a, another word for Luke. Luke, Luke wrote this uh, a long time ago. <laughs> the, it says, O oh, Theophilus, of all that Jesus began, both to do and teach. So both what he taught and what he did. This is what he wrote about. And then verse 2 says, Until the day in which he was taken up, referring to Jesus' ascension. Remember, all the actions that Jesus has done all up until the point of his ascension. It was all documented. It was all written down. And they explained everything that Jesus did. And then he was ascended, ascended. So then the book of Acts is what happened after the ascension. And verse 2 says, Until the day he was taken up. After that, he, went through, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So remember, he had chose his 12 disciples. It was 11, then it was 12 again. And he had picked all of his disciples, and God taught them and led them. And verse 3 says, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. His passion, is this the right word, sign for this word? By many infallible proofs. Exactly. The word infallible means cannot fail. So as after as many infallible proofs that he did, his, all of his teachings that did not fail, nothing fell. His word will never fail. Our actions, we can, we will fail. We will make mistakes. We're human. We will always make mistakes and fail. But this, but God never fails. Amen. Uh, again, infallible proofs. Being seen of them forty days. So remember, he was with, after he died and rose again, he was there for 40 days, teaching some more, and teaching all of them. And this was for the future, because he knew he was going to be ascended soon. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And verse 4 says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart. So God told them, or Jesus told them, actually. He said, and first of all, this them is the 500 people. The 500 people that were there, there was 500 people all together. And he told them to go and, and not depart. They were all together, and, and he, was, he was speaking to the 500. It was about 500 people. The verses explained there was 500 people together. And he said, uh, do, they should not depart, which means leave. Don't leave Jerusalem. He wanted them to stay there. And so they all went into Jerusalem, and, and he said, but, but when as they were going, there was only about 120 of 120 people left because a lot of people they just left off for whatever reason. And the verse goes on to say, uh, "But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith He, ye have heard of me." So he's saying, "You, you all." He's talking to the the group of 500 people. He said, you have heard of me. So, so you know what this means. You have heard of me. And then verse 5 says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost 
not many days hence. So this is this he said this is gonna happen soon. You're not gonna have to wait forever. You're not gonna have to wait several years for this. Is this gonna happen soon? So all these five hundred people that that heard this, only 120 of them stayed true and, and stayed. Can you imagine? Only 100 people. All these other people gave up, but 120 stayed through. And, and verse 6 says, and they therefore were come together and they asked of him saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So are you going to establish our kingdom? He's asking. He's asking. And all these 500 people that were there, they were asking Jesus, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel at this time? And they want him to stay, but Jesus, he already knew what he had to do. And that, verse 7 says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath. Because none of us know when it's going to happen. We don't know the time. We don't know the season. We don't know when it is. Only the Father knows when he's going to come back. So we, we're holding on to that. We know he's coming back. We know that the church will be raptured. And then we'll come back and we will for a thousand years. But we know because it's been already written. We know what's going to happen. Okay, so which the Father hath put in his own power. So he has the, all the power. Only God knows the time of the seasons. So he, he put everything in motion. Mommy. And verse 8 says, But ye shall receive, so, so again, it says, But ye shall receive power. And what's that power? So notice, this right here. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So when you receive that power, that Holy Ghost, that is when you get your, that's when you get the power. And when, so when you receive that Holy Ghost, that is the power coming on you. Do you have any questions? And, and ye shall be, oh, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, which is half Jew and half Gentile, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So here's the world. I mean, you see how the different continents are. It says the uttermost parts of the world. This means all over the entire world. But if you notice, it started first in Jerusalem. It said, but he said, he said both in Jerusalem and in Samaria, and then it went from there all over the world. So the church was established in that one church. Peter had the keys to the kingdom, and he preached that first message is spread. And this is not man-made religion. This is from God. Then Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And this is, uh, remember, that this is like 110 days during their, their uh, uh, celebration. They were in the upper room. Remember, they had gone up to the upper room, uh, 120 of them. It says, and when the day, mm -hmm. 
And when the day of Pentecost, you know, that's, what's that day? That's the Pentecost, you know what that is? Pente means five. Pinty is five, but yeah, it's a 50 day celebration. It's 50 days. It's 50 days after resurrection. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, this is like the last day, so all the celebrations that had happened up to this point was 50 days altogether. And on that very last day, it was on the very last day that this happened. It says, and they were all with one accord in one place. So this is the 120 that were in the upper room together. All, agree, uh, all in one accord. And verse 2 says, and suddenly, and suddenly there came a sound. From heaven, so if you notice the wording here, there came a sound from heaven. Remember, he had the keys to loose or to bind anything in heaven and earth, anything on earth and in heaven. He said there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. So it's different than just simply blowing. This was a mighty rushing wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And this is in that upper room there. Verse 3 says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, Cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. So this wind here, what was this wind? What is that wind? Does anybody have the idea what that wind is? Is that the spirit? Well, let's see. Let's see. I have an answer. This is just a picture illustrated so that you can see. The people sitting there together, all in one accord, and they're all maybe they were praying, maybe they were sitting, I'm not sure, but they were all there, all together in one accord. It says, verse 4 says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So that wind, that rushing mighty wind, that was the Holy Ghost. It was a different kind of wind, it was a spiritual wind, and it filled all of them with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So there's different, maybe there possibly there were different languages that were going on at the same time. And verse 15 says, For these are not drunken. So remember, this is Peter. I should have had, an, I need to have another picture. I need to add this to the PowerPoint to make it more visual. It says, and Peter, oh, he said, for these are not drunken, as you suppose. And he's explaining to them, because people thought they were drunk because they were speaking in tongues and all that. They said, no, they're not drunk. Seeing, but it is. that it is but the third hour of the day. It's about nine in the morning. The third hour of the day, is, it's not mean, it doesn't mean three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I need to add more explanation on this a little bit more. I need to do a little bit more study and some research so I can add to this and make it uh, last longer too for the for reveal. So the third hour is about, it's about nine in the morning. Yeah. So the Hebrew, the, the Hebrews, their, their time frame, they, they's, 
The starting time is at 6 o'clock morning. That is like the first hour of the day is at 6 o'clock in the morning. Three hours later would be about 9 o'clock. So if you were to judge 12 hours later, it would be uh, 12. Five hours later. It would be 12. So, yeah, it's about 6 o'clock is about sunrise, So which is why they say third hour of the day would be about 9 o'clock. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, so at sunrise is about 6 o'clock in the morning. So from that point on, that's when they start the first hour. So, so 6 o'clock will be the first hour of the day, 7 will be the second hour. So, okay. Nada. It's interesting how their times are different than our times. But anyways, uh, verse 16 says, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet. Remember, he said, no, no, these are not drunk as you suppose. He said, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Remember, he prophesied. Joel prophesied before, remember? Remember in the Old Testament, he had these prophecies, and now it's starting to happen. In verse 12, this is that, that same prophecy that he spoke of. He said again, he says, it, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, and you can read this. It. And remember, Peter understood what Joel, he understood that when he, when they, that mercy mighty women, they got the Holy Ghost, that he understood that this was that that he spoke about. Remember, God had already established this. He already told them that this was going to happen. And he, he prophesied this was going to happen years ago. And then later, it suddenly happened in that upper room. He's like, remember that promise I told you? Well, this is that. So the people had a choice here. Verse uh, 17 says, and it, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Remember, we understood it. Right? It said, in the last days, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and verse 18 says and on my servants and on my handmaidens which is women servants I need to remember that I keep forgetting what handmaidens is sorry on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and they shall prophesy so remember, that people were looking, they thought they were all drunk. And then they're, they're making these judgments against these people. And so Peter got up and he preached. And verse 37 says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men, and brethren, what shall we do? So they were asking him. He, they heard this preaching, and they were they were preaching their hearts. And they understood what had happened. And they remember they had been at a celebration and at a party. This was the last day, and they see these people in the upper room all speaking in another language, and they thought they were drunk or something. They were trying to figure out what's going on. And they were kind of concerned. But then Peter got up and started preaching. And he was telling them, This is what that was, this is that which was prophesied years ago. And the prophet Joel, remember what he said years ago? This is that, what he was talking about. And then they were pricked in their hearts and they were asked them, What do we do?
And then Peter preached. And he told them all. This is a picture that I used to illustrate. This is the disciples of Peter standing up there. This is the crowd of people asking them, well, what do we do? What shall we do? And Peter answered them. This is what he said. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this is, this is when the church started, from this point on. This is when the church was established. Remember, Jesus had ascended, and then this happened. But notice again, it says, in the name. There's no S at the end of name. It doesn't say names. It says name. There's only one name. And it's still that same thing. It's only one name. i got many verses that support this. There's only one name. Amen. I think I'm done for now. I could go on for quite a bit longer. But do you, does anybody have any questions? So you, the, the key is that you must be born again. If you're not born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. And I'm done for today. I, I got more. I can, I can go on for a couple hours more easily, but I'm done for now. We'll go ahead and take a break for now. Uh, do you have any questions? Well, I, I'll do one more verse. Uh, remember, this is... Uh, the next verse says, Peter says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So there were 3,000 souls that were saved that one day, right? 3,000 people baptized in Jesus' name. And Peter told him, this is to your children and to all that are far off. And that's, that applies to you as well. It applies to every one of us that are here. And that still goes on to this day. The book of Acts is still going on. The church is still here. It has not been taken away. The church is still here. Amen. And then I had this question here. This is my end. It says, uh, when was the church built? Was it built during Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, or Acts? Acts. And Luke wrote this during, you're right, this, this was during Luke's writing, you're right. Uh, Luke wrote about all the things that he saw, all these details that he added in. And he was very, very detail oriented with his writing, and he said, "Had to be baptized in Jesus' name, or the importance of Jesus' name." I have so much more I could add. We can go on for a long time, but there, there was the Jews got the Holy Ghost, the Greeks got the, the Gentiles got the Holy Ghost. The, yeah. It's for everybody. So the key is, um, these first four we're talking about Jesus and his actions and what he's done. Uh, but there was no church here. When I read just these these first four, the books, uh, the Gospels, there's some misunderstandings. But when you get to the book of Acts, it's very important. And that's where the book church was established. And Peter... He preached that first plan, and he did not deviate from that plan. <sighs> Acts was when the church was built. Was it in Acts? So remember, during Matthew's time, when Matthew they were writing this. Um, Jesus said, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Remember, and the 12 disciples heard this. They heard Jesus say, go and baptize them in the name. 
Okay, so they, they heard this and they understood it. And then later in the book of Acts, after the disciples had all heard this, they all got the Holy Ghost. And people were looking at them thinking they were all drunk. And Peter, he got up and he preached to them. Because people were all asking, well, what do we do? What do we do? And Peter said, well, you must be repent. And you must be baptized in Jesus' name. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he said, in Jesus' name. So these people that heard it, those other ten disciples that were there, they understood this too. They were in agreement with Peter. There was no disagreement, disagreement with them when he was preaching this. See, so those twelve disciples, they were all together. And they all agreed. It was in the name of Jesus. And Peter had the key, and he was ready to preach. That was beautiful. Thank you, brother. That was awesome. Oh. <laughs> Come teach next class. <laughs> Amen. That's good. I put that down. That was really good. That was really clear. Amen. That was awesome. Thank you. These twelve disciples, there were none that were in disagreement. They were all in, a, in one accord, and they all understood. And it, it began in Jerusalem. I love the church. The Book of Acts, chapter two, verse thirty-eight. That's the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. And I remember I used to be Catholic before, and I really didn't understand until later. I mean, I was baptized Catholic, but I still did all my sins. I still did everything. I felt guilty still. And didn't feel right. It wasn't until I was baptized in Jesus' name that I understood the true difference. And when I got the Holy Ghost and I noticed there was something inside me that just came flowing out, and I understood. I understood at that point who God was. And is and Jesus is a so that that when I got the Holy Ghost, the false teaching left. <laughs> That's beautiful teaching. Um, I want to add something. Um, these twelve disciples. This is a beautiful illustration. Uh, this is Peter who's standing here teach, preaching. And then there's there's other churches that believe that uh, mm -hmm. except Christ is your personal savior type thing. Mm -hmm. They did not preach this. They did not pre teach this in the Book of Acts. Matthew was there. Uh, Mark, uh, Mike, mm -hmm. Mike, Mike was there. Candido was there. We just say these are all. <laughs> I'm teasing you, but of course. But Peter, when he preached, he said, "You must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ." I don't see Matthew over here coming over to, to, to Peter and saying, hey, you're wrong. You've got to do it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. No, he did not. He used to completely support Peter in his teachings. And he understood that Christ was the Father. He, he understood that. So here it says they were pricked in their hearts. It's these people that were listening, they were, it's like they were pricked in their hearts. And they were like, because he, they heard their preaching, the teaching from Peter. And they were moved by that. They, they, they didn't know what to do. So they asked Peter, men and brethren, what shall we do? They were asking him directly, what do we do? And then in the next verse, this is when Peter said, you must repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That Holy Ghost was speaking in other tongues. And notice, oh, oh, what's that next part? That, the next verse she said. And the promise, right here, Jesus gave them a promise. He said, remember he said, promise, stay, for the, wait, stay and wait for the promise from my Father, Remember? And he said, I will empower you, and you shall be witnesses, both in me in Jerusalem and in Samaria. And remember, he sent them and said, wait for the promise from the Father. And so the Father blessed them and gave them that power, gave them the Holy Ghost. That promise, that same power, that same promise is for each and every one of you here today. This is for you. This is for your children. And to as many that are far off, the whole world shall be saved. As many as the Lord shall call. So, does anybody have any questions? That's a great job. You did a good job teaching today.
Awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. It's amazing. And thank you for each and every one of us helping us to understand your word. And helping us, uh, thank you for helping us to understand the importance that we must be baptized in Jesus' name. 